Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to talk about unwrapping and mainly how I can get all my textures onto one map. It's not the most exciting of subjects, but I've tried to put lots of hints and tips in there to help you optimise game model sets like this. It seems a reasonably complex process, but it's actually fairly straightforward, so I'll try and simplify it as much as possible. But you might find that if you're completely new to unwrapping, then looking at some more beginner tutorials might be better for you and then come to this one when you really want to optimize for games. I'm going to start off with a very detailed approach to how I optimized. You may not need to worry as much about those things as me. So at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can pack all these things into one map without so much optimization, which will be suitable for most games. So first of all, it's worth reminding you that if I select one of these objects and go into edit mode, you can see it's got lots of linked duplicates. So they not only share the same editable data, if I move one bit, it moves them all, but it also shares a UV space. So if I unwrap one of these, they'll all unwrap in the same UV space. So I only have to unwrap one of these. It doesn't make any difference if I unwrap them all because it will still only come out as one UV map, which they all share. Hopefully that makes sense because that's quite important to what I'm doing. And I've built everything in modules. If I select this and go to edit mode, you can see all the ones that are linked to that and this and so on and so forth. So that's the first thing to understand that although I'm selecting all and I'm going to unwrap them together, there's only a few things that are really being unwrapped and they're actually copying the space. The other thing to point out, if you see that I go into edit mode now, that there's a few things that are mirrored and I've mirrored them especially so that I can only have to use half that space for texturing once again. So the texture space will be copied to the other side. It does make it a bit difficult for painting at times because if you're highlighting the sun from an angle, you'll see the highlight on the other side as well. And you have to bear in mind that it's a complete mirror. So be a bit careful of that and be a bit wary of doing this sort of thing. Only do it where you know it doesn't matter if it's mirrored. And texture space is so short that I need to mirror quite a lot of objects. So I'll go back into object mode. I'll just quickly talk a bit about unwrapping. So let's choose this simple object here, zoom in into edit mode and you can see I've done a very simple unwrap. I've just cut it into thirds. Let's isolate that shape. In fact, you can see that I've cut the bottom out anyway, and I've just done a simple cut down there and down there. Where possible, I'm trying to go for nice big texture areas. It makes it easier if you have fewer islands, because if you ever want to, if I go to, let's say UV editing, and I want to paint on the actual map, I can paint over here as well as on this area here. And the bigger the islands, the easier it is to see and understand your maps. So again, wherever possible, keep your maps or your islands large. And by islands, I mean the area that you've cut up and is one whole segment. So this has three islands, one, two, and three. So there's a few very basics. And I'll try and do other episodes where I talk specifically about texture mapping. One last thing, I have hidden a couple of objects for my unwrap, just because I've actually already unwrapped them because I was testing them out. And you can do that, that's no problem. You can unwrap at different times. It's all about the way you pack your islands at the end. So all going well, I should be able to select all of these. Make sure you haven't selected any cameras or anything like that, or lights even. Go into edit mode, select everything. It's best to be in faces, because that's what Blender's looking for to unwrap, and press U to unwrap. Now it says object has non-uniform scale. That means I've selected something which I haven't applied the scale for. And that's really important. If your object has non-uniform scale, it will unwrap incorrectly. So I'm going to undo that. And I actually know what it is. It's the lock that I've chosen here. And I had already unwrapped that. So I'm going just to hide those as well. You must make sure that you reset your scale. You can see the lock that I just had selected had an unusual scale. If I go back to that, in fact, I've resized it for different objects. So it's bigger here than it is over here. That's why I unwrapped it first, because I knew I was resizing it in different places. So if I hide that now, and I should be able to click on everything else around the place, and you can see that my scale transform here is all set to one. Now this all might start sounding a bit overcomplicated, but you probably won't have these same issues if you're not doing the same linked duplicate idea that I'm doing. It's not essential, it's just for maximum optimization. But it's really important that you do make sure your scale is set to one. Anyway, let's try once again. So select them all again, and then into edit mode, make sure everything's selected, and you to unwrap. No error messages, so that's good. Let's go across to UV editing. And you can see all my maps 
uh, into one place. That's the great thing about Blender 2.8. You can select multiple objects in edit mode, so you can unwrap them all together. Now there's a few interesting things to point out here. Some maps are underneath other maps. It looks like this one, for example, is underneath another one. And if I want to find out which object that's joined to, I can select one of its faces and choose this option up here. In fact, I have to select the face again. But now that will tell me where it is over here. So if I press the full stop or period key on my numpad, it'll tell me exactly where it is. Now I've made a mistake here because I haven't marked my seams for this object, which has kind of caused a bit of an error here. So I'll have to go back in and just quickly mark some seams. You might want to see me do this, otherwise you can skip this step. Back into object mode, isolate that one object into edit mode. Let's press tab. Let's press the forward slash so I can go in. And I'm going to unwrap it nice and simply with edges selected, so two on my keyboard. Around here. So select those edges, control E, mark seam. This one too. Control E, mark seam. And then I'm going to have one across here, but I do need one single line to cut that island up in half. So Control E, mark seam. So now I should be able to unwrap this one. I think that's the only object that was causing me problems. So hopefully I can come back out of isolation mode, forward slash on my numpad. Let's zoom out a bit, select all, into edit mode, select all the faces and unwrap once again. So you can see that's done an okay job. Now what I will need to do is put the island margin up. And I usually choose three for that. You must understand that when you're painting your objects, there is a slight bleed that you put over the edge and you don't want one object's bleed moving into the other. Now there are a few gaps around. And like I said, I'd already unwrapped a few objects. This is where I can bring up my outliner and look at those objects I've hidden. So there's a lock. I've also got my beams here and my short beams here. So there's a few different hidden things. I'll just go down my list. That's just a backup, so I don't need that. Is there anything else? Huge long list and short stakes on the ground. There we go, there's another one. So now I can go back into object mode, select all, back into edit mode, select all, and I can see where these islands are that are overlapping. I can just select all at this point, go to the UV menu and pack islands, and that will shift them all into place. There is a dialog box down here to make sure you've got your margin still there. So to simplify, because I know that was fairly complicated, it is actually as simple as selecting everything in your scene, making sure that you've set your scale to one, into edit mode, and unwrap, and it will pack them all together like this. So it's a nice easy thing to do. Just be aware of your island margins and reset your scale to one. So that's some basic theory about unwrapping. And I like the fact in 2.8 that we can select multiple objects and put them all on one map. Now I can start painting these individual elements and because many of them are linked duplicates, lots of it I'll only have to paint one time over. Hopefully that all makes sense. Don't panic if it doesn't. The more you UV unwrap, the more you'll understand about this subject. There will be other tutorials that are more in depth about me unwrapping specific objects. Okay, so I hope that helps and I'll see you next time.